Hi, everybody. OK, part two of uh, my kind of look at the highlights of my own auction, the Beauty and Everything sale that we're doing with Philips Auction House. Um, you know, before we get to that, actually, because we have a few loops around, people often don't know which way around you're meant to use this. You're meant to use it this way. Like, the reason why there's this wide part is so you can hold it in your eye like that. Whoop. I'm not used to it because I wear glasses all the time, but basically people who are used to using loops can always, like, hold that thing in there like that. All right? Keep that in mind. Um, OK, let's start with watches. Uh, Naihita Type 1B. I love this watch. I wore it a ton. It's an incredible piece. Naihita is an independent watchmaker based out of Tokyo. He's a little team of guys, him, his engraver, and his watchmaker. Between the three of them, they design all these wonderful watches, and uh, they hand engrave the dial, so they have a really kind of interesting character, visually speaking, uh, on the dial side. The cases are really beautiful and crisp because they mill everything. They don't stamp it. Um, it's a very kind of over-the-top way of making a time-only watch, but the result really speaks for itself. It's something you have to see in the middle to appreciate. Um, this is my personal one. This is the one that I got directly from him when he first launched the company, and I think this was the fifth watch he ever made. Um, him and I have become very good friends, and obviously the Army's a dealer for them now, uh, and I asked him if it would be okay to swap my original dial for the latest dial. Because you know over the years, like he's gotten better at his work, uh, and the company has really improved. And I wanted people to appreciate the original case with like the latest dial. I thought that was a cool thing to be able to do. Um, if you win this, au win this lot at auction, uh, the original dial is actually included, so you can just see the difference between the two. Okay, next. Uh, this is something that I feel very strongly about. Like I love two register chronographs. Old two register chronographs from like the 30s to the 60s are my jam. I think they're awesome. And I've owned a bunch of them. And my favorite, favorite one is actually the Vacheron 4072. It's not a Patek, it's not a 130, it's not a 1463. I actually like the 4072 the best. I mean, I like it so much, I'm literally wearing one right now. This is one I picked up from Milan years and years ago. But the one I want to show you today is another wonderful example. Yellow gold, champagne dial, uh, really beautiful condition with all the hard enamel intact. Just a wonderful, wonderful watch. It's 35 millimeters, which some people get a little scared of, but don't be, because really this is such an important and beautiful watch, and I hope people will consider it for their own collections. Okay, next, um, staying on that Vacheron theme. Uh, see, this is why it's worth coming to uh, the Petter building to come and see these watches in person, because this is super cool. This is a Vacheron pocket watch uh, that is made entirely of aluminum. Well, not entirely, almost, almost entirely of aluminum. So if you were to hold it in your hand, it weighs almost nothing. It's a very, very surreal feeling. And uh, it's not just the case was made in aluminum, but the dial, the hands, many of the movement parts, with the, with the exception of the springs, were made in aluminum. The reason why Vacheron did this was because these were done for uh, a very large and important Canadian aluminum company called the Northern Aluminum Company, uh, or what you might know today as Alcon. They made these for their VIP clients, they made these for their, um, for their long-standing employees. Uh, this one was for Mr. W.E. Bennett and was prevent presented to him in 1956. All right. Check that out. You know, why do you need to own a pocket watch today? Well, A, they're beautiful, beautiful things, and B, you can use it as a desk clock. I actually use a lot of pocket watches just as a desk clock, because you can get a little plastic stand, just sit it right there. It's a wonderful thing to look at, okay? Okay, next. I'm, I love this. This is um, something that actually I have to thank Ben Clymer for. Ben was at the shop in New York years ago, and he was, like, he was wearing one of these, and I was like, what is that? And he's like, oh, this is a Portuguese, but this is not the regular IWC Portuguese. This is actually a remake of the original Portuguese way back in the 30s. Now, what makes this, this remake, which they made in 1993, so special, is that. It is an incredible... Uh, reproduction of the original pocket watch movement. It's got beautiful finishing, and it's just a level of finishing that like you don't see on IWCs anymore. Um, I want to just wind that up so you can see that. You'd probably hear that, right? Like, because it's such a big movement and it's a big ratchet. It clicks loud. And check that out. I don't know if it's, Sam is it glaring or is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, it it wears surprisingly small. I mean, I, I wore it quite a bit myself, and you know, this is by far and away the largest watch I've ever owned. Um, it's very thin, which is why it still wears okay. I have a six-inch wrist. 
Um, for anyone a bit bigger than me, I think they would very much enjoy this. Uh, it's also a platinum example of it. So they made 250 of these. This is number 10. Next. Uh, this is a very old Omega from the very early 40s, and it is the most beautifully preserved old watch I've ever owned. Like, it was literally new old stock. Just fascinating numerals, like kind of Art Deco-y, long, elongated, um, with these interesting hands that are syringe-like. Uh, if you look at the case, the condition is just super, super crisp, and the lug holes are very much intact. Small little thing, 31 millimeters, but it has a lot of presence because it's got this thick domed crystal on the top. Okay guys, next is this. Uh, this is a funny little Speedmaster. So back in the day, Omega actually made a Speedmaster for the Mitsukoshi department store in Japan and I had this dial in hand. And I, uh, years ago, managed to get just a spare loose dial and set of hands. Uh, back when Omega used to sell these as service parts, and I socked them away in the drawer thinking, okay, one day I'm gonna do something with these. Um, I didn't wanna put the dial-in hands into like a regular Speedmaster case, because they're always a little bit big for me. Uh, and eventually Omega released the FOIS, the first Omega in space. And uh, the FOIS is a little bit smaller in diameter. It's got straight lugs and no crown guards. And I was like, all right, perfect. This is the watch that needs to have this dial in hands. And so that's what I did. And that's how we ended up with this thing. What is cool about the Mitsukoshi dial, right, is that obviously the Panda dial, but it's also silvered. Um, so it's not like white. It's got this nice kind of silverish finish to it. And uh, the hands are actually very unusual. If you think about it, most Speedmaster hands are actually black and white and they're painted. Whereas this one is, uh, is also a silvered hand. So the look of it is very different from a normal Speedmaster. Um, check it out. Uh, it is uh, something that needs a little bit of closer inspection. I put it on this black NATO just to kind of sporty it up a little bit, uh, but I love it. I love it. I will miss this one when it's gone. All right. Last but not least, because I think this bears a little bit of explanation. Um, I've got two of the H. Moser collabs we did, the Total Eclipse. Okay, uh, the total eclipse is based on the is a collaboration we did with H Moser. It's based on the phenomenon of a total solar eclipse. Uh, what we did was we took a Vanta black dial, which is the blackest material in the world. We took a Vanta black dial, surrounded it with a ring, a polished inner bezel of either red gold or steel, and the idea is that that's a kind of a it's been inspired by a total solar eclipse. Because during a total solar eclipse, that's the only time you look at the sun and see the halo, the corona around the sun. Um, now, theme of the watch aside, these are sold out. These were meant to be sold out, and what I did was I actually kept back two pieces, the last two pieces of the production run, uh, as a gift from the Armory to the Armory team. Um, so these are actually not my watches, these are my team's watches. And the idea is that when we sell these, the proceeds of these will be split among our team. Um, also, I had uh, a, really, a really great artist make these. So his name's Gabe Lau, or you might know him as Labeg online. And he makes these like cardboard sculptures of watches. So hold on, let me actually let me put the watch and the thing together. They are so cool and so like just weird and wonderful. Um, Gabe was telling me his process. So he actually really tries to focus on the detail. And although it looks a little kind of almost a little janky, uh, it's, it's actually incredibly detailed. Like he will render out the crown properly. Um, he actually makes sure that the diameter of the watch exactly matches the original real thing. Uh, in the case of these little sculptures that Gabe did, he even tracked down Vanta Black paint so that he could at least come close to recreating a Vanta, like a true Vanta Black coated dial. Um, there are many different grades of like Vanta Black, and so what's in the watch is, is meant much higher grade than the paint, but it's still like awesome that Gabe went to that, that sort of level of dedication. Oof. All right, uh, so that concludes part two of my kind of highlights at the uh, Beauty and Everything sale. Um, the thing is ending on Tuesday. Uh, if you guys would like to know a little bit more about any of the other watches, please let me know. I'll see if we can just squeeze one last episode in before the auction starts. And um, good luck bidding, all right? Check it all out, thebeautyandeverythingsale.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>